how do we know our personal critic? There are many of us who think of our personal critic as our own criticism, and it's not true. Let us know a bit more about our own personal critic. Welcome to this video on emotional fitness, especially for founders and teams, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, my own boss kind of people. We are learning about emotional fitness. It is also applicable for anyone who wants to be emotionally strong. The principles remain the same. All our videos are based on scientific theories. And at the end of the video, you will find a practical application, a practical tool so that you can take the theory and start doing something with it. This is an educational and informative video. So if you are feeling in any kind of emergency, please stop watching and seek help. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's understand what or who or why and whom is our personal critic? Who is our personal critic? Now in another video in this series, we understood what exactly is criticism. While we all think that criticism is simply a disapproving opinion, the second part of the definition of criticism is that it's a disapproving opinion based on someone's perception. It is very important to understand the second part because it is an opinion, but at the same time, it is based on someone else's perception. We also see in another video how our perception is changed. We have mental filters. We have biases in our understanding of reality, understanding of relationships, understanding the real meaning on what is happening. Even we ourselves have biases. And when people interact with us, they have their own biases. So there are two filters working at this time. Now, Whenever you try to do something new, anything different, everybody has an opinion. And when this opinion does not agree with you, you get criticism. Since childhood, we have been told what to do, what not to do. In fact, it has been scientifically found that the number of no's that a child hears is 10 to 12 times more than the number of yeses. Of course, many of them are related to safety of the child. Parents have the greatest of intentions for safety and making the child a better person. And there are so many good intentions why people give their opinion, say no, say something which seems negative, which seems like we are being told off. And we do get told off as children, as students, and even when we grow up. Now, what happens is this negative inner voice keeps attacking us. It keeps judging us. Over a period of time, what has happened is we have started identifying with this inner voice. One of the first things to do is to disassociate from this inner voice. You could say that this is the voice of XYZ. You could give it a name, you could give it a shape, but it's not your voice. It is the culmination of all the negative feedback or constructive feedback or all the times that you have felt bad with that feedback. It has gone in and created a version of a voice in our head. Many a times it is closest to a parent's voice or a teacher's voice. And this negative voice that attacks you is your personal critic. He or she in your head is living with you, is there 24 hours with you. You try to do something nice. It tries to pull you down. You do something great, even then things don't work. So why and how does this work? How do you recognize this? Now, if you see one of the easiest ways to beat you up, <laughs> is to create very, very high standards, even for the smallest of tasks, smallest of things. This is exactly how a thing should be done. A personal critic in your head has set impossible standards for what you are doing. 
and then when you do the smallest of mistakes it starts beating you up in your head this has come from our childhood or other places where we definitely needed to learn something and this is exactly how the handwriting should have been exactly how the drawing should have been exactly how the room should ha should have been and so on all these shoulds and coulds have kept on coming with us and they created a set of impossible standards it gave us a sense of existence because we felt good when our parents or teachers said something good about us and we thought that this is exactly how it should be done but what has happened is when this has come towards adulthood this pattern has created an impossible set of impossible standards in our own head so when we are creating something new especially in a startup especially in a high risk environment or especially when even when you are doing something by yourself and rest of the world is not agreeing with you is skeptical of you you have high standards to prove them wrong and when you are not able to achieve those high standards there is an this inner voice coming and saying that you are not worth it you couldn't do it see i told you so and so on and so forth with these kind of things what do they do what does this voice do and again i'm separating this voice from our own voice this is not your voice this is not your voice this is something else and putting a name to it will be amazing to separate it out we have a video on how to disarm your critic but right now we are learning how to recognize the critic in the disarming video i actually put a name called pc for my personal critic so for pc could stand for personal critic pc could stand for pathological critic psychological term or pc could simply stand for piece of crap and it helps you to degrade or give less importance to the criticism that is coming especially from your own head if you are not believing in your own dreams if you are criticizing your own dreams constantly 24 hours you don't even need to go out and tell your idea to some someone this is the first voice that is defeating you how does it do that well it keeps a gallery of failures that you have had since childhood it remembers every failure see i told you when you were 12 this happened you tried this didn't work out you were laughed at you were bored this is that is and so on and so forth at the same time it is asking you to be the best it is saying that you know what is for your good they actually come in the form in the disguise of being a good person or a, uh, setting a high standard you know i want the best for you remember somebody's voice is coming back is it your teacher is it your parent is it your coach something someone says i want the best for you oh come on you didn't do it now you're worth nothing this personal critic asks you to be the best if you are not the best you're nothing and that actually starts eating you up it reads your friends minds remember in the other video we saw mental uh, filters or perception biases and one of them is reading minds of other people assuming what the other person is thinking now this personal critic takes on the task of assuming what your friends are thinking my friends think i'm boring <laughs> my friends think all my ideas are worth nothing laughable my friends think i'm being stubborn my friends think so and so and so and so they may not be thinking that at all this is our perception this is our own view and we are reading the minds of uh, our friends our audience uh, in case you are giving this to your customers and so on and convinces you that you always do this you never do this and so on and so forth again filters always never there men perception filters that are perception biases that are actually distorting the version of reality that you have you should do this you should do that you could do this you could do that this arsenal of shoulds and coulds is something that makes the personal critics voice 
seemed to be a very righteous voice, very correct voice, said, this is the right thing to do. And if you're not doing it, you're the worst. And that is how just building up a big amount of huge amount of credibility in front of you saying that, come on, I told you, this is how it should be done. And if you have not done it, this is, you're not worth the next startup. You're not worth the next success. You are not worth what you're doing. When it happens again and again, your sense of worth is constantly going down. Even when you, you have an illusion of being right, this is the right way to do it. There is no right or wrong way to do something. You have to see what is the path ahead, what are the options that you have. It's not that if you don't do something in a specific way that you are worthless, that you are a failure. These labelings start coming in, being stupid, boring, worthless, and so on. These things start eating us up and they reduce our sense of worth. The longer you keep this critic, even when it's making you feel temporarily good, in the long run, it's not helping you succeed at all. So let's look at an exercise. Write down a few thoughts, one by one. Writing down the thought is already pausing your mind, slowing down the thought process. And write down, what does it make you or help you feel? There are some feelings which come from the personal critic, which are, they, they work like, uh, like an addiction where you feel good by not taking risks. You feel good by doing a mistake. Why? Because it is saving you from taking a bigger risk and you feel very comfortable in your own comfort zone. Is it helping you feel safe? And what is the feeling that you're avoiding using this thought? Is it that while you are feeling safe in this zone, you don't want to take a risk doing something else. You really don't want to be told off by a parent, by a boss, by an investor, by, by your customer, and so on and so forth. The slightest of opinion from a random customer has affected your uh, whole thinking about your startup or how you, about the thing that you are so good at. And so many people have given great feedback, but because you are weighing the opinion of one random person, with the opinion of your personal critic. And you see, see, I told you so. And you want to avoid that feeling. Is it that? Write it down. And then we have to figure out what do we do about it? We have a whole video on how to disarm this personal critic. And we need to understand. Now we need to, first we recognize the personal critic. We disassociate that, hey, this is not my voice. This voice is a combination of everyone that has given me a negative feedback or made me feel something not okay. It might be because of my perceptions, because of their perceptions, but is it really true? The moment you start asking that question, you can understand, what can I do about it? Is it really true? Is there something I can do about it? Now, one of the key things that will change after this is you will start questioning every time you get something negative in your head, you say, is that really true? Or is that some version of me being a student in high school and being told off by X, Y, Z coming back to me? Is that it? As you do that, you will start understanding your own opinions a bit more. You'll start being compassionate with yourself. You will start taking care of you because right now you are starting to question one of the biggest authorities inside your head. They are not an authority. They are your PC. You can put a different name, funny name, but remove that from your opinion. That is different from you. Now, one of, the, one of the ways this can actually change is to create a habit out of it. In every video, I give this chart. You can take a screenshot or you can download a PDF of all the tools. 
and start with just one day and then just one week. And what are you going to do on that first day? You do this particular exercise. Write down a thought. What does it help you feel? What does it help you avoid feeling? And what could you do about it? You may not write hundreds of things, but even the first three or four are going to start changing things for you. As you start doing this as a habit, you can combine this with other habits. You will see a great change in your assertiveness, your confidence, your, your speed of execution in your startup, in your business, in your own life, in your relationships. It will be an amazing feeling. You'll start feeling free. For other videos, keep watching our series on emotional fitness. See you in the next video.